Alright, hello. I'm CryptoZ. Uh, I'm a Slay the Spire speedrunner and a run verifier actually. Uh, today we'll be doing the. I'm joined by Uble, who's also a uh, speedrunner and game verifier. Run, runs verifier. Hello. Yeah, I'm uh, really happy Z was able to sub in for me. Um, four characters is my favorite category, and I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, uh, Z knock this out of the park. So whenever you're ready, give us a countdown, Z. All right, um, we'll be starting with the defect. So, and basically, wait, okay, in three, two, one. All right. All right. So, um, for those of you who have not seen Slay the Spire, uh, Slay the Spire is a uh, roguelike deck builder. Uh, you start at floor zero of a very tall tower, and you make decisions along the way, fight combats uh, in a turn-based fashion in order to get to floor 50 and beat the final boss. Um, because of the very glitchy nature of Slay the Spire speedrunning, about half of the things I said there are true. Um, one thing a veteran Spire, Spire, Spire player will notice right out the gate <clears throat> is that Z is doing quite a lot of uh, different glitches, some of which um, put the player on different levels on the same floor. And what this does is allows the player to gain access to additional resources that they wouldn't have otherwise been given. Normally, as you climb to floor 50, uh, you see a map in front of you, and on each level of that map, you click a unique floor to climb up to the next level. But um, because of a lot of different exploits in the game, uh, Z might end this run on something very much higher than floor 50. Yeah. <clears throat> I've already done so many glitches, it's, 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 uh, it's crazy. Uh, I'm not entirely sure which one to go over first. Uh, but something sure. like this, this right here, I just uh, took two nodes at the same time, which wouldn't, uh, shouldn't be normally possible, but uh, right. very doable because why not? Over here again. Because uh, of spaghetti we just, code. Yeah. <laughs> spaghetti code. Actually, I'll do something very yeah. different here, but necessary. I mean. So one one other thing I will explain here is um, the different types of map nodes. So you see Z. Climbing all the way up to floor 15 now, uh, about to reach the final boss of the first act. Um, Z has been building a deck of uh, a mixture of power cards and um, attack cards. Uh, actually, here it's mostly attack cards. So, um, yeah, the defect has two main strategies in this in this um, in this category: physical attacks and power spamming. And what Z is hoping to go for here is a bit of a high roll, but uh, Z is intending to lean more into the defect's ability to uh, spam out crazy strong attack cards. Um, and what you might have noticed is some sort of tomfoolery with the game settings when Z was uh, setting up his entry into this fight. <clears throat> Z has hopefully set up a... Uh, what we call node duplication, where Z has entered this uh, rest site where he upgraded one of his cards, but he uh, manipulated the game's timers using um, using a technique called node buffering. And yeah, and now you can see that Z has re-entered the same rest site after beating the boss. The reason why we fight the boss twice is because after a boss fight, you get access to better rewards. So beating the boss once gives you a choice of one of three rare cards, and also access to a strong relic. Relics being the sort of passively active items that help the, help the player scale um, along the way, in addition to their deck. But, um, but since Z performed a successful node duplication, Z is now fighting the same boss twice with better rewards and getting access to even more uh, strong cards. Ever take electrodynamics here, or do I just continue on the path of? Uh, I think I just continue on the path, honestly. Just you can probably this. push through this. I, I yeah, agree. Yeah. yeah. Um, no energy either. Damn. I'll just go for the sacred bark. Uh, potions could be really. Probably good. bark. Yeah. Yeah. 
I would say Bark. Bark is really solid. Um, I'll go for shops here as well. Uh, okay, so yeah. Yeah, you have tremendous amount of gold, definitely. So normally Act 1 ends on floor 16, um, and the first floor of Act 2 is floor 18, but because of node glitches, Z is already on floor 22. Um, there are a lot of powerful different things that can happen uh, on Act Floor uh, and question mark nodes in Act 2. Um, a kind of consequence of how the timing of node map node entry works in this game is that uh, the player can actually bypass some of the downsides that normally come with with the uh, um, decisions that they make at different map nodes. So you might see a, a snake offering you lots of money in exchange for a curse. And by a curse, we specifically mean a bad card that gets stuck in your deck. <clears throat> but by simply running past it way too fast, entering the next map node before a uh, animation completes, the player is able to enter the next map node, taking all of the rewards without actually taking the curse. Yeah, we do that a lot. And uh, you can also use that to transform cards. Uh, but instead of transforming the That's... cards, you simply go too fast and, and, and uh, not take the card that has been transformed. Yeah. Yeah, Z's pretty low health at this point. We're hoping for um, some safer act events, okay. maybe some sort of uh, healing. Um, and so you'll see Z doing another node duplication here at this shop, looking for different ways to keep his health high. Mm, I think I'll take another one. Yeah, I would. I would totally agree with that. Even the nice. flex. Um, I'll even save the flex for the final boss if I don't get anything better, because. Uh huh? This is a uh, double node. You don't have to fight this fight. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, you can open the map. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. Oh yep. well. Okay, now you spent. Okay. Hey, this is fine. This is great, actually. Um, ooh, lifting is actually really yeah, good, so, right? Because I have a turn, uh, rip and tear. Right. So, uh, for the folks who are intimately familiar with different card games, or also for those who are new to card games, or maybe just new specifically to this one, having a small deck is a great thing because it allows you to more consistently draw the cards that you want to draw. Um, so some of the glitches that we do involve removing uh, bad cards, starter cards, cards that don't improve the overall strategy from the deck. Um, and part of the interesting strategy in this game is knowing when to uh, when to spend money to remove a card, when to spend money on um, adding a new card to your deck when to risk entering different uh, map nodes in order to access more removals, more gold, etc. Ah, okay, and perfect. So, what you probably didn't get a chance to see is uh, Z successfully performing what's called the bite skip. So previously I've mentioned this uh, funny mechanic where if the player outruns a card animation, they avoid having bad cards added to their deck. But it turns out that the... Um, that a lot of other events that don't give curses operate in the exact same way. So... Z was just given an offer from a bunch of uh, scary-looking vampires. I take it, right? Oh, nice. I think either way is fine. Oh, you got Necro. I I'm got assuming. Necro, yeah. Perfect. And a I just need yeah, to and as as I as I attempt to explain, uh, <laughs> as, as I, I as attempt, attempt to, to explain do one, glitch, one glitch, Z is already uh, I do like three. <laughs> already on another. I'll All do right. my best to catch up, though. So basically, Z uh, the vampires offered to trade Z. All of his pesky, annoying strike cards, which are a bunch of basic starter cards that don't do a whole lot for you in a speed run, and instead. Uh, uh, in exchange for a bunch of cards called Bites. These sort of hmm, decent cards, but cards that are not very good for a speedrun. 
And so what Z did was he accepted the offer to trade all of his strikes for a bunch of bites, and then simply outran the vampires. So the vampires are, are left there with a handful of bites, and no, no, um, are left there with a handful of strikes, and Z doesn't actually have to take the bites. This is nuclear battery for sure. Yeah. You don't, you don't ever yeah. evoke that. Yeah. Yeah, so Z has a very solid run now. Um, got a little it started scared off during that, too. Yeah. Started off a little shady, but now but it should be breezing through the rest. Ooh, smoke bomb. Right. I take it. The only yeah. thing Z is looking for now is is a smoke bomb. Oh, perfect. <laughs> oh, you skipped it. Oh, no. I, I automatically clicked it with, I, without thinking I, I, I had uh, full uh, right. full cards. Yeah, it's probably it not a bad problem. idea we'll still to kill discard the boss, it. But, yeah. 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 So, um... Yeah, what... Uh, one of the funny things about running Slay the Spire fast is that it's often about resource management. So one thing I haven't talked about is these potions that are at the top of the screen. Um, occasionally the player is given potions as a reward after a fight or during an event. And um, because he had a full slot of potions, he, he clicked the smoke bomb, which is another very helpful speedrun potion and forgot that his potion slot was full and didn't actually pick it up before he ran off to the next floor. But uh, it should be fine. You won't uh, screw that up again. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I could even uh, go for another for another shop here and dupe it. Just in case I get a, another Not one. Not a bad Ooh. idea. Yeah. Dolly's mare, it's fantastic. You're doing you're doing perfectly on time. You're at about yeah. 11 minutes. So, yeah. Uh, remember that's going to duplicate the FTL. That just duplicated it. No, no, uh, we good. We're good on the hyper beam. It's because it's in slow mode. It, it, it appears a little slow. Oh, you duplicated hyper beam. I see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's right. Uh, bag of marbles. I thought you were I have, going yeah, I think for I'll a complicated bag because nothing else is better. Uh, I would take yeah. marbles. I agree. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing else. Waffles also not a bad consistency pick. Maybe yeah. after that. Well, we have root. Re yeah, I can't afford. Um, that's fine. Broke. This should be. This should be great. Yeah, we're fine regardless. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about the gear. Yeah. So. That's fine. Like we're way too good now. Yeah, Z's doing perfectly fine with, with the deck that he has right now. Um, this draws more. One interesting thing about about um, about this category of speedrunning is that um, because you're playing with four characters uh, back to back to back, and because we allow uh, custom file setups as uh, legal for our speedruns, we have to do a little bit of math in order to figure out what is the most optimal way to have set up our file in order to um, to make different characters more consistent than they otherwise would be. Um, so on this file, we have we have won exactly one time, and what that does is it makes it so that the player, according to the game file, has only seen certain bosses a certain number of times. And so at the end of the first act, the second act and the third act on the first Ooh. two characters, which are silent and defect. Yeah. Um, oof, rough. <laughs> I'll just take the accuracy. We know exactly what, what, what bosses we're going to end up fighting. Yeah, I would take accuracy for sure. Um, yeah. I think you're doing like, a great job explaining everything. I'll take another, um, take another accuracy. You. Speculative, yeah, why not, right? It's a good card. It'll pay off, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, we might not even get uh, Grand Finale. Uh, the reason I was like uh, stuck at that shop for a little bit is because Grand Finale is basically... Oh. <laughs> now the game is just uh -oh. uh, tempting me. Is this too much? I think too much, right? Uh-oh, no, 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 you gotta skip it, you gotta skip it. <laughs> uh, let's gotta skip it. Nope, attack. don't have room for that. Yeah, this uh, could easily be a uh, reset. So, yeah. uh, part we get, of the nature of playing a roguelike dice. game. Yeah, if, if we get any blades or shivs, we, we, we stay in it. If, if not, then we're just ha gonna have a lot of powers without anything to power with. Right. Um, so what you saw on, on the defect with with uh, Z was, was a like very attack heavy, a, de <laughs> a very attack heavy strategy. That might not actually. Uh, um, might unironically. No, I think that's still. You think? I think not. I think it's way uh -oh. too slow. I'll just take okay. so many fights. Okay, there we go. Uh, blade dance. We're fine. Sure. It could work. I'll, yeah. I'll even take this fight just to... There we go. There we go. All right. Of, of and one. definitely take that flex. Ooh. Ooh. There was a flex on the shop? 
Yeah, you want to be watching out for a flex pod for the boss, just oh, yeah, for, for safety, sure. but... I often yeah. do, like, my eyes are, are, are on flex pods and stuff, but sometimes uh, you do skip if you go a little too fast. It's fine. Yeah, exactly. And remember, uh, you have Aura Calcom, so there's no need to ever play a defend card. Alright. Yeah. Ooh, that's... I don't think I got it. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, YOLO. I'm not sure either. We'll see. Oh, wait. What happened? You did duplicate it, it looks yeah, like. Yeah, but I, I didn't click on the map. So you know what? Up... I don't even know what happened. I didn't... <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, upgrade, it, upgrade another card and just continue. You're doing fine. Uh, probably Blade Dance for sure, yeah. So, um, so getting back to the main strategy for this character, we saw in Defect that Z went ver uh, very hardcore into uh, strong single target and AoE type attack cards. But for Silent, there are, um, well, for, for Defect, there's another key strategy, which is um, power spamming. And um, power cards are unlike attack or skill cards that have a consistent, or that basically play themselves out immediately. Uh, power cards are cards that have a sort of long-term effect. For silent, there are, um, so uh, the power cards are not particularly good, but there are two types of attack cards that really shine through, which is one of them is called uh, shiv spam. So you'll see Z playing a lot of these zero cost uh, so just... grayed out kind of cards. They are uh, sort of the rogue kind of feature of Silent um, in contrast to her other main strategy, which is Poison, that um, is able to scale very well. And with some recent patches to the game, Shiv's got an even stronger buff to them that um, make them shine through at all levels of play inside the Spire. Wow, you're doing a really nice job with this node duplication. Yeah, thanks. I, I'm doing such a nice job, I, I messed up the... F I didn't mess up, I got it right, and I thought I messed it up. <laughs> I'm just trying oh, to, no. do, uh, to yeah. get Bite Skippers again. The same uh, the same uh, event that we right. got with the defect that helps us... Uh, right. Uh, ...remove uh, or exchange our uh, strikes for uh, Bites. But of course, we don't take the Bites, we try right. to skip those. And that would thin out the yeah, deck. As a as a consistency strat, it is very good to, um, especially for a marathon, do everything you can to remove cards from your deck um, as possible. But, you know, you can't always be lucky, and so what Z is doing is hedging his bets, trying to enter uh, uh, trip, uh, question mark nodes to get... I think so, to right? get or, or flex. I would take or the flex pot and the souvenir, right? Flex and souvenir wins this for you. Uh, too, it's too late on the souvenir. It's fine. I'll take the trip. Mm. I think this should be fine, actually. Not bad. Yeah. Uh, you you can always get terror, and then it's kind of worthless. Eh. It, it, trip is a, a better terror in a way. It's fine. Like it's all good regardless. Now we just yeah. if I get like uh, card draw, it'll, it'll be great as well. Eight eight eight. That's lethal. Just to, just so I know. But it's it doesn't matter. I also have yeah, uh, with the fairy in the, fairy in the bottle. bottle. Anyways, yeah. Anything to smith? Not really. Let's just go for a little bit safer. Yeah, you need health. Keep your health up, I would say. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, sorry. and um, so the other the other key strategy that the Silent has is uh, centered around this, this gold card that's in Z's deck called Grand Finale. Um, this is, yeah, this is totally fine to lose the fairy here, I think. And don't forget not to block, because you have... Uh, oh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or Calcom. <laughs> I keep blocking oh. anyways. It's fine. We're not gonna lose the fairy. We'll be fine. Uh... Yeah, I think I think this fight's fine. So, so Silent also has this very nuanced card called Grand Finale, which you'll be probably curious if you've uh, seen it stuck in Z's hand. Why is Z's not playing it? Um, it's because although Grand Finale costs zero energy to play, and Z starts combats with anywhere between four and six energy. Um, it's only playable if there are zero cards in your draw pile. So the draw pile down there in the bottom left has to be empty in order to play Grand Finale. But once you manage to play Grand Finale, it basically kills everything. It puts 50 or 60 damage on every single enemy. It's a very strong AoE card. 
And um, in order to successfully pull off a grand finale, you have to manipulate the order in which you draw cards, play cards, discard cards, and so on. But for speedruns, we're primarily dumping out our deck. We're emptying cards out of it. And so conceivably, you could have a, car a deck that has seven cards in it, and then you draw a grand finale every time at the start of every fight with zero cards in your discard pile, or in your draw pile. And so finale just becomes an instant super... Kill super everything. hardcore damage card. Um, Hopefully we get a peak box here. Oh, another grand finale, I'll take it. Yeah, you have very low health, Ooh, so be careful yeah. if you... Uh, I would not have... Mm. Uh, uh, Uh-oh. I shouldn't have gone for that. It's okay, we have... Uh, we have, have a good a fairy, idea. Yeah. Five cards, right? Uh, one, two, uh, three, yeah, and... four, five... No, not gonna happen. It's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll fish for the... Uh, I would save quit here, and... Um, you can use that Gambler's Potion naturally just to uh, get Grand Finale played. Um, I think I think we still kill here. No. Oh, one mm -hmm. health. Wait, eight, eight, six, nine. Not gonna work. It Is might it be wise to yeah, to yeah, save quit and then go for a grand finale next turn. I think, I think you can pull that off. For sure. Just draw once with quick slash. I think, and you'll be safe. Or and backflip then? or something. Uh, and. Yeah, play play your draw cards turn one. Go for grand finale on turn two or three or something. Oh right 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 right. Uh, right. four cards here, right? Uh, so accuracy yep. gets played anyways, and then... Yep. There's another grand finale inside? No, there isn't. Yep. That's <laughs> yeah, okay, it's okay. So... I think I got it. Yeah, this'll be fine. A little bit of a miscalculation. Yeah, grand finale is a little tricky sometimes to play. Yep. It's a bit unfortunate Wait. how how large the deck currently is, but um, yeah. typically this isn't uh, what happens. But uh, sometimes sometimes you're playing a roguelike game and bad sometimes things. Sometimes you're playing a ro roguelike. Oh, there's another grand finale available as well. Funny. Yeah, I would not take it. <laughs> That's second uh, one might have been a little greedy anyway. So let's hope for some removals. Nah. Uh, hmm. Interesting. It's fine. It's a good path, and uh, I'll, I'll dupe more. <laughs> it's more dupe time. Yeah, we definitely want some removals here. We're yeah. still fighting Time Eater. We're still looking for uh, some sort of solution to that fight. But with Gremlin, Gremlin Horn, we've solved a lot of the area of effect problems that we have. Yeah. Um, with, Smoke Bomb, uh, there you go. That should... Uh... Yeah. And Liquid Memories perfect. can help us as well uh, cast any anything a yep. lot, uh, so we should be yep. perfectly okay now. I'll actually not even so, use Alchemize anymore. So you're just about at the 23 minute cusp. Um, okay. So just... Yeah, so just get through this Act 3 solidly, and um, I think what you have so far is very solid right now. Yeah, it's funny how fast. Oh my god, plane! I'm gonna. I'm not gonna take it. It's uh, <laughs> okay. At least now I know that pain is over there, so I can. I, I just don't yeah. have to take it anymore. Okay, let me just see where I'm gonna. Okay, I'm gonna smoke bomb here. Yeah, Z, Z got some pretty unfortunate luck with the um, boss relics during this run, despite fighting four total bosses and getting four total boss relics, when you normally only get two. Um, he really didn't get the boss relics that we typically look for, the ones that remove quite a lot of cards from the deck. Um, he only got two uh, removals Actually, from yeah. boss relics, 
when removals from boss relics can be anywhere between um most cards yeah. to it can it can it can remove 10 cards from your deck on this character but yeah but all z needs to do is pull off the smoke bomb glitch and this boss is pretty free ooh exciting i see from the from the stream that we've hit 100 pounds so thanks all to everyone who's donating Oh. Indeed, we have. Uh, we just re received the an anonymous five pound seventy eight donation. Excellent. No comment. But I know who did that donation, so it's fine. We're now on a hundred pound one. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. And uh, fortunately for for everyone, Z did manage to pull off that smoke bomb glitch, bypassing the final boss of Act Three. Um, and now Z is on to the third of the four characters called the Watcher. The Watcher is the most recently released character. Um, unlike the Defect, who is sort of a wizard archetype, if you will, um, and the Silent is more of a rogue archetype, you could you could kind of say that the Watcher is something between a barbarian and a monk. She has uh, two primary stances, Calm Stance and Wrath Stance. And for speedruns, we mostly spend all of our time in Wrath Stance. Wrath Stance... Uh, during Wrath Stance, um, Ooh, mm. the player deals and receives double damage. And so, um, entering Calm or leaving Wrath is typically uh, only done um, <clears throat> when the player is unable to immediately end a fight. Um, what you might have also noticed is that Z was resetting at the start of this Watcher run. And the reason for that is that uh, because of the way the game stores uh, the unlocks in a save file, we no longer have control over what bosses that we see. And so Z instead opted to reset a couple times in order to ensure that the boss at the end of the first act is the one that has the um, least amount of health, the one that's easier to uh, kill, the one that requires exiting Wrath Stance as little as possible. This is my uh, one of my least favorite fights in the game. Uh, yeah, this is a pretty cursed fight, unfortunately. <laughs> it's fine. Very hard to uh, I think uh, I just manage. Need to follow up here. Follow up's a good card. I like yeah. follow up. A little low on the health, but it shouldn't be a problem. Bowling is great. Bowling bash, excellent. Yeah, I'm a little hey. bit behind you, but... Uh, yeah, we're good. We found some really good potions. But yeah, given the Watcher's ability to immediately just output double damage, which is unparalleled as far as this game goes, um, she can basically get through 60% of the game taking pretty basic cards. Uh, she has scaling built into built into her core mechanics. Um, being able to put down enemies with lots of health is is very easy on this character. Um, for speedruns, it's a little harder for her to uh, survive longer fights. So typically you're hoping to get the hardcore combos on her. Um, and Wreath of Flame is one of one of the best ways to do that. Which is a card that Z just managed to pick it up. Pick up. So what I'll go we're for hoping a really here early kill and then I'll heal for the second one. So I'm gonna go out all out here. Absolutely, yeah. I, I absolutely agree. You could yeah, you could probably even spend that flex pot. Yeah, so once again Z is doubling the encounter with the first act boss. And the goal here being simply to get access to more powerful cards and um, powerful relics in order to thin his deck down be able to play more and more cards and um, kill enemies fast without having to pay the consequences of entering Wrath Stance. Ah, and... Yeah, and uh, what Z... I thought that was going to split for a second. Yeah, and what Z managed to pull off here also is a um, somewhat new glitch, I would say, the last couple months. 
once. Um, this glitch involving this boss relic called Astrolabe. So normally the most recent relic that Z picked up removes or transforms three cards in your deck. So you, normally you pick your worst cards, your worst three cards, and uh, confirm your tr selection of three. And then they're replaced with three random cards from your from the watchers uh, from the your classes, your characters' um, card pool. But once again, abusing the mechanics of how this game uh, ties uh, the actual deck to the animations of cards being added to the deck. Because of the glitches that are previously already set up, Z uh, bypasses the new cards getting added to the deck. And so this, this Astrolabe, which normally gives you three random cards in exchange for three of your worst cards, simply takes three cards out of your deck. And that makes all the difference in a speed run where you're trying to get as tight and tight and consistent and compact of a deck as possible. Mirror's tricky. I I don't know if I would take that, yeah. Yeah, I didn't take it. I ended up uh, just going, because... I think that's right. Ooh, I hate this guy. Yeah, once again, the power of Watcher really shining through. She's able to to perform, despite the fact that her deck has really only been developed by uh, two-ish cards. Um, uh, now we find fight our first major challenge of the run, the Book of Stabbing. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> Probably still on a rest here, no? Or uh, I'm good. I'm you have good. a rest site. Yeah. There's other rest sites, and if I yeah, get to Pendab uh, Pendab is here, I'm absolutely really good. worth it. As long as they don't, he doesn't attack. Ooh, he does. Okay. Very rare for him to attack on the first turn, but not impossible. He dies anyways. I still don't use the fairy in the bottle. I'm good. Um, hmm. I think I'll take this. Yeah, I'm taking the uh, the wreath, and I took the flank sleeves because it, it actually just works with uh, with watcher, regardless. Sure. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so one of the uh, scarier things about the uh, this current Watcher run right now is that Z um, does not see the enemy's intent. One of the core mechanics that defined um, Slay the Spire is the ability to see the enemy's intent. Um, so instead of just playing the cards that are in your hand, that are in your hand <laughs> and having to guess whether you should some at some point early in its development to make all that information known. Just a heads up, guys, we're getting a bit of buffering issues and our quality oh. tank. Ta just hold on a moment. Sure. Okay, we're okay, I think. Uh, I just have to pause and, re uh, and pause and play the stream. I think it's okay. Now. All right. Yeah, it looks great to me. Okay. I assumed it was on my end, of course. I, I, yeah, well, the, the buffering happened on my end, so I don't know what was going on, uh, but yeah, it's fine. Yeah, thanks for taking care of it. No worries. Yeah, so... Um, so the most uh, important... A very unusual deck, so piloting it is a little... <laughs> a little funny. Yeah. So you're, you're doing pretty good on time. You're at about okay. 33 minutes um, right. on a... You know, 50 minute uh, estimate. And so just do your best to conserve your health here. This deck has a lot of the right combo pieces, but, you know, could die to Nemesis at any moment. Um, and I guess it's worth mentioning the uh, third and final of Watcher's stances. So, Ever? Watcher has the Wrath <laughs> so, no, stance, which. Could be not. Again. Makes her deal and receive double damage. There's Calm Stance, which takes you out of Wrath, but um, uh, has an energy scaling me mechanic built into it. And then 
finally, there is divinity stance. So the way that Z is entering divinity stance is by playing a card called Blasphemy, which is performing some sort of sacrilege in order to uh, deal triple damage. So unlike Wrath Stance, which uh, deals double damage, which causes the player to deal double damage, Divinity Stance causes the player to deal three times the normal amount of damage with their attack cards. The interesting uh, effect of Divinity Stance is that there is actually no downside. The player does not actually receive triple damage when they're in Divinity Stance. The reason for this is that Divinity Stance is hard to enter. Um, there's a slower way to enter Divinity Stance, which requires scaling up this quantity called Mantra. Or you could do what Z does, which is perform Blasphemy. And uh, the downside to Blasphemy is that you die at the start of your next turn. And so if you enter hmm, this is Divinity be a Stance... a little bit of mathematics, not gonna lie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like, We're at a very with... interesting moment. Uh, <laughs> and... Alright, I'm just gonna... Don't even... You'll do fine. Okay. So, Watcher... Um, because Watcher... Because Blasphemy... Uh, if, if Z plays Blasphemy and does not kill all of the enemies, does not end the fight, Z will die at the start of the next turn. But because Z has this potion called Fairy in the Bottle, Z can strategically play Divinity, kill enough enemies deal enough damage so that he survives all of their attacks and then dies at the start of his next turn. But in Legend of Zelda style, the fairy appears to save him and uh, keeps him alive for just one more turn. And so there's some str strategy to deciding when you should die. Mm. Holy! Okay, I, I also had to uh, do pots in case... Yeah, this was very close. <laughs> okay, uh, so yeah. with and every character, you, you see... there's a there's an optimal Z... optimal way and and like a suboptimal uh, or not suboptimal uh, different strategies uh, to go in speedrunning. Unfortunately, we had we had we didn't get any of the major major ones yet. No, that was yeah. very far from a perfect Watcher deck. Normally, with Watcher, you get that fancy card that Z had called. Wreath of Flame, and then Ragnarok. hopefully also you get Blasphemy, but then in pairing with the Wreath of Flame, you get this awesome card called Ragnarok, which um, basically what that results in is that you're pairing a multi-hitting card with a card that scales off of multi-hitting, and then entering <laughs> Divinity Stance to triple the damage after all of that. And so... It having just the three cards fights instead of uh, taking multiple right. turns in a fight, yeah. Uh, having the three cards very similarly works with m most other oh damn, most other um, characters. They have a way, or we have concocted a way to to end fights as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. um, how many resets has this has has this been? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. These are this is not a bad time for a donation. I suppose, yeah. but, uh, how uh, are we doing on time? Doing pretty well. Uh, Thirty-seven okay. minutes, so you have. Okay, yeah, yeah, we're good. We're good. We're, we're great. Twelve minutes to win a single run with Ironclad. Very good. In terms of I... donations, we've had. Oh, sorry. Uh, go no, on. go ahead. Yeah. In terms of donations, we've had nothing new in since the we got up to a hundred pound and one pence. Uh, Damien has actually been Damien Captain Nibblesworth in the chat has been posting the link in the chat with segways with Linus style segways Linus tech tips style segways that's the one. Um, so yeah, if you guys want to go and donate, please click on that link that uh, Damien's been posting in the chat. I'll be posting links in the chat as well to donate. But uh, we've smashed a hundred pounds, which is absolutely fantastic. We're a third of the way to our final goal. Let's get to three hundred pounds by the end of today, please, if we can make it. We're only £199.99 pence away from reaching it, so please, every little helps, and it all goes to a fantastic cause. Yeah. Yeah, great job on the progress with the milestone. <clears throat> um, and like I've mentioned before... Uh, at the start of these runs with these last two characters, Ironclad and Watcher, you have no control over what bosses you end up fighting. And um, for the sake of consistency, 
what Z did was um, uh, start and abandon a bunch of different runs until he was pitted against the easiest and most consistent of the uh, three Act 1 bosses. And that's basically how you can control, but um, fighting, fighting this boss over the other bosses um, makes you a lot more secure in being able to finish your runs. Of course, with a more optimized category um, and with more top runners competing, you have a lot less control over how much time you can spend resetting. And um, <clears throat> although fighting slime bosses luckily, is very great, it's not necessary. As you, the characters it's not can necessary, deal, no. yeah, but sometimes things can go. Things can go quite wrong. Ah, oh, do I take them? That's. I just take them, right? I'm yeah. a little behind you. You'll see, you'll see. It's very interesting. You'll see a very interesting thing that almost never Ooh. happens in a <laughs> never happens in a speedrun. I honestly don't know if I would. I think I think yeah, that's fine. Didn't you have a double there? You could have fought slime boss twice, uh, I think. Yeah. But a whirlwind. And offering. So uh I can I can just offering into whirlwind. And can just remove cards throughout uh throughout the act two. So yeah, that's I, fair. I think yeah, I think it's I think it's good. Like we may, we may not totally see fine. a whirlwind otherwise. I mean, the way this one has been the run has been going so far, I'll I'll take I'll take it. This is a very uh, consistent strat that Z has going on right now. Mm. Although I will disagree with the the removal of barricade there for falling event reasons. Ooh, ooh, completely forgot about falling event, right? Um, yeah, yeah. But then again, I have like a million attacks, so whirlwind. That's is, true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. You never know. There's, but, um, there's, there's anyway. a lot of different ways to run the game. Uh, people have yeah. like a lot of different preferences, but generally the, the main strategies are are quite set in stone. Kind of, yeah. I guess. New, uh, we have Uble discovering a new glitch every two days, so... <laughs> <laughs> I recently, I recently have been so busy. Uh, uh, recently it's been speed frog. Yeah, recently it's So been anyway, speedfrog. this is uh, about as close as we've gotten to the ideal uh, deck yeah, this setups. should be a, a much better better run than the other ones. Ironclad is by far the most popular category. Um, Ironclad single character is by far the most popular of our speedrun categories. And Ironclad yeah. also has probably the simplest um, base Combos. strategy, um, yeah. which is to get cards that give you strength, get cards that scale strength, or scale based on how much strength you have, and then um, get as much energy and removals as you need to consistently play those cards. Um, so Z has two of the best cards for this combo. There's Whirlwind, which is a card that spends all of your energy and does a area of effect uh, multi-hit attack. Ooh! Oh, sorry. You'll you'll you'll, uh, you'll see. <laughs> okay. And um and then Z also has cards like Offering and Bloodletting, which gives him more energy with which to uh, play these uh, high-cost uh. cards. Did you did, did you see what happened? Yeah, the Heavy Blade is nice. Yeah. yeah. I, I never picked Heavy Blade, so that's why I was a little bit uh, shook. Mm -hmm. Ah, Falling Event. You're right. You're right. Uh... I think I'll just take this in case I actually pull the glitch somehow. Does uh, Ironclad have any card? Uh, headbutt. 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 Okay. Yeah. That's um, it. Really? So Z's. Okay. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing. Here. So what Z's currently doing is setting up a um, much newer glitch called the. Um, Empty bottle glitch. We sort of have a have went through a phase where we were naming all of our glitches to sound like uh, Legend of Zelda glitches, but but basically you manipulate the UI of a relic that lets you select a card, and you basically get the relic's effect to go off in the middle of a fight, and the game doesn't really know what to do. Got it. When you make that kind of a decision during a fight. Oh great. Uh, do I just use it? And, uh... No, I'll, I'll say use it the against boss. the boss. Yeah, the boss. Because yeah. uh, if the boss wasn't, oh, uh, memories, yeah. yeah. If the boss wasn't, what's it called? Uh, I maybe use it against transient then. Oh well, it's up no, to you. I, I actually hate this boss more than transient. Yeah. 
Um, um, and so, uh, so Z, normally that relic that Z has called Bottled Flame puts a attack card from Z's deck in the opening hand every single fight. But um, because we glitched the UI of the card, uh, Z is going to be able to put a card in that bottle when he's not supposed to be during, during the middle of a fight. And the end result is that the game gives you a proceed button, which lets you visit the next floor despite being in the middle of a combat. And as a result, you skip the combat because the game just gets confused. Um, and you can use that to skip boss fights, as well as any other fight in the game, fights that end up being particularly slow. Um, and time is, is when, very... oh! time is when, time is when Z uh, steps into the, yep, time is when Z, Z's character is dead on the floor. And, yeah. Hit it. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, great. All right. Oof. I'm assuming that was around 40 something. It was 40, almost 42? exactly 40 minutes, yeah. Oh, yeah, I think it was like 44 or something. Hold on. Uh, 45.07, I think, oh. is what I got. Ah, okay. Perfect. Um, uh, exactly around the time. Good. I was worried sorry, because I... it was very possible to go way, way earlier if we get if we got luckier. But uh, yeah, luckily I accidentally we did not get lucky. Stopped the, I accidentally stopped the timer and then press the start timer button again, so it cancelled off the timer, so it was a zero. So you actually had zero, you technically you had zero seconds. Yeah, I'm just that fast. Oh <laughs> uh, dear. Super fast, yeah. Anyway, um, thank you very much for that run, by the way. Uh, very, yeah, very much us. appreciated. Um, now, as far as donations go, I don't think we've had anything new in since the £5.78 donation that was made half an hour ago. If anyone does want to go and donate, please, please, please do so. Uh, the link is being posted periodically in the chat, and we also have the panels down below, which has the link there as well. Uh, the next run we have is Osmorn with running, I think, Light Matter, Any Percent NMG, which is going to be quite interesting to watch, so please stick around for that. That run starts in about a quarter of an hour, so again, we're going to go back to the interval, probably put the donation add on if we have time. Um, and thank you to Z and Uble for... Slay the Spire 4 character any percent. Do you guys have any final word you'd like to say? No. Uh, thanks, everyone, for uh, checking out our, our runs. Thanks also to the organizers for, for having us on. Uh, you can find me at twitch.tv slash just like the name uh, O-O-H-B-L-E-H, as if you're really sick. And you can find Z at... Uh, crypto Z, so crypto and then the letter Z and then underscore underscore. Yep, and uh, we both uh, run a different, a uh, wide variety of different Slay the Spire speedrun categories. Yeah. Most recently, I've been into an unofficial category called All Achievements, which um, uh, myself and Speedfrog have managed to get. Um, Speedfrog managed to get one at the uh, 4.45 minute mark, which is really amazing to, to knock out all the achievements in this game so fast. Um, and we have a lot of different other categories that... Uh, have a lot of hot competition, so yeah. Thanks again to the organizers. No problem at all. Thank you very much for taking part. We hopefully will see you again soon. We're now going to go over to the interval to uh, start the to well, before the next run, which will be the light matter any percent NMG run by Osmo. So thank you both again for that run. Hopefully we'll see you again at our next event. But until then, take care and. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for having us.